Hi, how are you? My name is Glenn Clifford and welcome to IELTS Talk Tips. This is a series of 20 little segments to help you develop your speaking skills for the IELTS Oral English Examination, sometimes called the IELTS Speaking Test or what have you. I think you know what's going on. You know about it and you want to get a better grade and I'd like to help you achieve that better grade. Now, uh, I must say that I have been teaching at the time of this video uh, being recorded for more than 17 years and I have not done, well, basically almost no video work in the past. Usually I will record my talks on audio, so uh, this is a new experience for me and I know I have your support as I get through this traumatic, scary experience of talking to a video camera. But uh, I guess what we will do is dive straight in uh, to this first episode and this first tip. It's called, called Record Two Minute Monologues. Now, maybe some of you know the word monologue. Uh, maybe some of you know the word uh, dialogue. Um, basically, a monologue is when one person is talking and a dialogue is when two people are talking. And in the IELTS test, uh, one of the uh, sections of the speaking test is to record a, a two-minute monologue or even, I, I, I mean, they will record it for you, but you'll be stating it to the examiner. In fact, it's part two or section two of the IELTS speaking test. Part one is called short answer, which is just designed to get you to wake up your English brain, to get you settled into the examination environment. So they'll ask you questions such as, hi, how are you? What's your name? Where do you come from? And maybe some slightly extended questions about why you are learning English or something about your hometown or uh, maybe what types of food you like to cook even something a bit abstract like that but not too challenging part two which i was just talking about before the monologue is to talk for two minutes without break on a question which the examiner will give you and the, the question will always begin with the word describe such as describe an activity that elderly people do to keep fit and healthy or describe uh, a book that you know about but you haven't read yet and then they will give you, I mean, when I say they, I'm talking about the examiner or the people at IELTS, will give you one minute to think about the, the, the question and also to write some notes. One minute later, they will say, begin your answer now or maybe start speaking now. And your job is to try to speak for two minutes without break. And without break means no, um, uh, uh, um, uh, or just silence maybe two seconds of silence but once you start getting past three or four seconds of silence it starts to feel a bit uh, like you're struggling and and it's a bit obvious that you don't have so much to say so that's um, part two of the IELTS uh, speaking test part three is more like more like a two-way discussion with the person testing you or, or a two-way discussion with a, a friend so it will feel relaxed in some ways but that part three is also kind of interesting because the questions are scripted and the questions are more abstract, so more challenging. Uh, so in this way, part two of the IELTS uh, speaking test or speaking examination is very interesting. It's more challenging than the, than the part one uh, questions, which are, are short answer questions, questions designed to wake up your, your English brain and silence your Japanese brain or your Chinese or Uzbek brain. Um, but part two is not quite as challenging as part three, which is, as I said, it's like talking to a friend, but it can be quite challenging because the questions can be abstract. So uh, as I said, part two is quite interesting and it's also a very, very good way to get ready for the IELTS examination because as I said, it's not as easy as part one and not as, as difficult as part three. And in general terms, part two, these, these two minute monologues are a really great way to develop your English language skills because they challenge you to speak for a long time without break and to develop your um, kind of storytelling abilities and things like this. But there is a, a secret to doing this. Now, what I just said is probably known by by you and many other people, but there is a secret way to, to uh, practicing with these two minute uh, monologues, and that is to record them and record them for a long time. I'm talking maybe one or two months before you take the IELTS examination. And to record them on a schedule. Now, what that means is that, let's say that you can practice your um, 
oral English for your IELTS examination on your quiet days. Maybe your quiet days are Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Or maybe your quiet days are Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. It really doesn't matter. It could be Monday, Tuesday and Sunday which are your quiet days when you can really devote a lot of time to preparing for IELTS in general or the IELTS speaking test. It doesn't matter. Try to record uh, or, or I should say choose three days of the week to record your two-minute monologues and there's a, a, a technique or a trick um, to to really getting a great result. It's all about the scheduling of, of this work. Uh, the idea, let's say that your quiet days, your practice days are Monday, Wednesday and Friday. The idea would be to record three IELTS questions. That's three two-minute monologues on the Monday and then listen to them back two days later. That's maybe listen to them back on the Wednesday. So let's say that you record three questions on the Monday. The questions could be typical IELTS described questions. Describe an activity that elderly people do to keep fit and healthy. I think you know elderly people, people like your grandmother and your grandfather. So describe an activity that elderly people do to keep fit and healthy. Another typical IELTS described question. Describe a town in your country you would like to visit but you haven't been there yet. Or maybe a more recent IELTS question uh, in this particular section of the test, describe a book that you know about but you've never had the opportunity to read yet. So let's say you record those uh, three stories uh, or three, th I, I like to use the word stories because it sounds so much less scary than the word answer because many, many times the answers that you're giving are like stories. So you record these three two-minute stories in your practice sessions on Monday. You know that your next practice session is scheduled for Wednesday, right? What do you do is you take your, your smartphone or your recording device and you listen back to your Monday recordings on Wednesday. Now there's a very, very important reason why you should be listening back about 24 or 48 hours later. It's so that you can get a, a fresh perspective on your work. It's quite difficult to get a, 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 an accurate or fresh perspective when you've just recorded 20 minutes ago. But if you listen back 48 hours later or even just 24 hours later, you can really get a kind of more objective or if you don't know the word objective, a distant view on the work, the recording work that you did two days before or 24 hours before. So you wait until Wednesday. It's your speaking practice day again. You listen back to your Monday recordings on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, you should be recording three fresh questions. Remember, IELTS part two questions always begin with the word describe. So you listen back to your Monday recordings on Wednesday and you record three, question, three fresh questions on Wednesday. And then, of course, what happens is you, after you've critiqued your Monday work on Wednesday and you've recorded three fresh questions on Wednesday, you wait uh, a couple of days, it's your recording day, it's your, your, your spoken uh, practice day again on Friday. What happens on a Friday is you listen to your Wednesday questions on a Friday and you record three fresh questions on Wednesday. Because you always have to have fresh, fresh questions that you're recording to listen back to two days later. In this way, you are practicing about nine IELTS questions a week. Uh, for the, this particular section of, of the speaking test. But as I said, it's good for all sections of the speaking test. And, and you're really getting a kind of a great self-feedback, a, self, a great self-critique because it's difficult to get somebody to critique your work. And many, and many, many times you can be your best critic. Uh, I've known people that have been kind of a bit the French word would be blasé, maybe the English word would be would be careless or they don't care too much about um, critiquing themselves for on what they on what they sound like for the speaking test. But surprisingly when people record themselves and they listen back through their smartphone then they become very critical and that way they can become their best critic, their best teacher. They can really find out what's going on. So it's a great way to really really get an idea of what you sound like um, words, maybe some feedback on your vocabulary, words that you used, maybe you could have chosen a different word, um, maybe some spoken grammar issues, and of course the all-important pronunciation issues. A final point before I go on this is that this is 
in, in some ways it's very innovative for some people because people don't think of doing it and not enough people will do it because they really don't want to hear the sound of their own voice. But in, the other, in, another, in, an, in another way, it's actually um, a very, very old technique. If we are looking at professional dance teachers, uh, maybe professional ballet teachers or, or any type of dance or any type of performing arts, I even know some ice skating teachers, some teachers that are teaching professional athletes for ice skating. Uh, their day-to-day -day routine is to, of course, practice, but also they always have a video camera recording what's going on because many, many times the professional ballet um, performer, um, ballerina, I should say, or the professional ice skater really can't get an idea of what they look like, that they're getting the move in the right Kind of, kind of right, correct posture, the right position until they see themselves on a TV, on a monitor. So if it's very, very beneficial for professional athletes to record themselves on video, you can be sure that it's very beneficial for you to record yourself on audio when preparing for the IELTS spoken English exam. Okay, I got through the first episode. As I said, uh, I'm not really so experienced myself in talking to video cameras, so it's a bit like this for me. Usually I record my lectures in audio format, but I'll be back again with episode two to give you some more IELTS talk tips. See you next time.